Welcome to the arena of the supernatural. What a blessed day. What a blessed week. And I know you are sharing with your friends. You are telling your friends what God is doing right now. It's a powerful session. A powerful session. Days of glory. And I said, these are the days of glory. I'm telling you the days of glory on earth where you're going to be blessed. And I'm telling you today it's a special day. And because on that, uh, of course, I'm 2016, it was a beautiful year. We were, Sassy, uh, Sassy, our guest preacher, it was a Bishop Simon Inienacho. And uh, Bishop Simon is one of those preachers who come from, originally, he come from Nigeria. But now he's situated in United Kingdom. He oversees more than 100 churches under his leadership he is a powerful man of god and wisdom when you are sitting with him you can hear feel the wisdom of god the power of god that is working in his life and i know you're gonna be blessed in this service you are still going to hear him more even on the following uh, days of glory program and i'm telling you you're gonna be blessed and uh, today is going to speak about the anointing he quoted on the book of job chapter 29 verse 1 to, to 6 i'm telling you speaking uh, elaborating on the anointing and i'm telling you your life will never be the same again the power of god is going to shake you shape you and inspire you so that you're going to be a better person you see god is doing his things in these days what we do, what we need is to receive from him the anointing the power the teaching the illumination the revelation of his word and our life will never be the same again and i know you're gonna be blessed tonight if you like to support this ministry the numbers are on the screen just call us phone us and support this ministry your offering and whatever you can give it will be appreciated and I'm telling you, yesterday, wow, we did a tremendous work with the pastors at Inanda. Mm, you know what happened? Oh, there is a house where we were, we were this Farama Winda Masha and uh, uh, putting uh, new doors. And I'm telling you, we did wonders. We're still going to show you what we did at that house. And the woman that was living there was very uh, excited happy because for the first time in two years her house was made up and i'm telling you thank you for giving thank you for supporting thank you for doing wonders to change people's life that's what we do that's what jesus said we gave our, our little brothers and sisters the small thing that we have we bless them you know you're going to be blessed thank you for doing that and we are helping our community Inanda in Durban, north of Durban. May you be blessed tonight as Bishop uh, Simon preaches to us. See you next time. Tomorrow. Bless you. Come on, my Zion. Welcome, my Bishop. Simon and his fellow workers, they saw something. They said, it's good for us to make a, a tabernacle here. Yeah. One for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Praise God. Yeah. This place is like the house of God. Yeah. And also, this place is filled with people who are hungry for God. Yeah. I am so
so excited to meet the man God have used to raise this foundation and the wife. I'm so pleased to meet two of you. And also I've seen the picture of your children. God has a great plan for two of you. And I want to thank God for my friend, Apostle Dr. Mbele, who is through that relationship that myself and uh, Dr. Swene has come to. We actually had breakfast together. That's amazing. <laughs> but mama, I don't know what you do. The man does not eat. I made him to eat in a feast. <laughs> He doesn't. Whatever you give to him, I need some of it so that I don't eat too much myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Are you excited to be in God's house? Yeah. Are you happy to be in God's house? Yeah. I'm happy I can sleep here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. To be honest, the best thing that can happen to anybody in this life is to know Jesus. It doesn't matter whatever, the best thing is to know Jesus. And I want to encourage you to love him. If you love Jesus, your life will be sweet. Amen. Doctor, you and your wife, I want you to know that today we have come into a covenant relationship. So, Every door God has opened for us, both of you can walk through it. And I won't be afraid to walk through your own doors. Today, this ministry receives an international baptism. I want you to find your pastor that will pastor your church in UK. That is going to happen. We need to train the pastor that will pastor this church in United Kingdom. Yeah. Prophesy to somebody that said to him, your time has come. My time has come, my time. Listen, when your time come, when your time come, nobody can change it. And I desperately mean it prophetically, your time has I love the choir. You guys here are awesome. I, I wish I can do one song with you people like capture it so I can show it on television. But Dr. Swain has uh, promised to give me all your material so I can broadcast it. So every one of you here, this is the truth. We're going to pick your materials. I am on a live broadcast, one hour every week. Live broadcast, covering 82 nations at a go. Amen. So the dynamics is big. And God has given you the wisdom to make this things happen. And we are opening a door for you for international ministers, apostles, seizing the apostles to come here to empower you, to feel you, so that you can explode. Prophesy to 
and sorry to somebody on your side, say to him, you are not an accident. <laughs> Tell him again, say you are no original. You are no original. <laughs> of time to talk about some of the things God have already done. Those ones are substance, but the hope ahead of us is far greater. And these few minutes we are going to stay together, I would like to put something in your heart that will cause you to desire something better. There is always something better. Praise God. And I see greatness in your lives. I see greatness. 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 All of us see greatness. You are people of zeal, people of passion. You sing from your heart. You worship from your heart. Everything you do is not, you are not trying to copy anybody. You are original. And I believe that God wants to see this. God wants to use it. God wants to use it. Praise God. I am excited that I found a man who loves God. Very humble, very gentle. He doesn't talk. It's amazing. It's rare to find. You people are blessed. Yeah. I say you are blessed. Yeah. I say you are blessed. Yeah. Are you ready tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. There is one song they say. If there is something that makes me come into your presence. That. There is something that makes me come into your presence, my helper. Come into your presence, my 
something else. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you know. You try this that says. <laughs> you are the mighty God. That great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. That great I am. Somebody said dialogue. dialogue. When I give it to you, you pick it. Yeah. Then you hand it back again to me. Yeah. Somebody, you understand that? Yes. All right. Don't rush it. Don't play louder. Get back. You are the mighty God. That great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. Jesus. times in life you need encouragement and you need it from human beings. Suppose you don't get it from the people you expect it from. God will override them and give you encouragement. I was about to celebrate my 14th year of being made a bishop but everything about that situation was bad so I decided not to do anything. But I was waiting and praying and just celebrating with the Lord and the Lord began to speak to me in this way. There is none like you, O oh Lord. There is none, there is none like you. There is none like you, O oh Lord. Jesus. There is none, there is none love. Have you been failed before? Have people disappointed you? And then the Lord will come to you and say to you, There is none, there is none. There is no other one like him in your life. 
show you don't need to desire another except to desire him. Only the Lord. Somebody shout the Lord. Look at my face. Look at open 
your eyes. See my face. Take it, take it. Take the anointing in the name of Jesus. You need that transfer. Take it. Take it. Everybody lift your hands. The anointing is here. Let your power fill this house. Let your glory set your people free. Set your people free, Lord. Set your people free. Set them free. Set them free. Set them free, Lord. And reveal your glory in their lives, in their family. Reveal your glory in this city, in this church, in Durban, in South Africa. Let your glory, let your power overflow. Overflow. Jesus. 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 Take it, church. Take it. Be filled afresh. All of you be filled afresh. Be filled with the glory. Be filled with the power. Be filled. Be filled in the name of Jesus. All of you. Be filled. Receive your fresh anointing. Receive a fresh anointing. All of you, receive a fresh anointing. Receive fresh anointing. Your lives will never be the same again. You will never be the same again. Transformation. 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 In Jesus' name. And the church of God said, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a good clap of it. Please stay with me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Take your seat for a few minutes. I have a deep hunger in my heart for you. I am hungry for what? You. The Lord has put in my heart things that I must say to you. Number one, I wanted to share with you the secrets of the anointing. The secrets of what? That's number one. Number two, I want to share with you the benefits of the anointing. The anointing is God's presence upon a person or a location or a thing. And this anointing, that's all that God has. If God calls you, or God raises you up. The only thing he guarantees you is that I am with you. That's all. He doesn't give you any money. He doesn't give you any check. But the check you receive from God is what? I am with you. And if God said I am with you, it means that every other thing you need is in that I am with you. Praise God. The Bible says that God showed his acts to the children of Israel. But to Moses, he revealed his ways. So the man that knows the ways of God produces what others eat. Are you hearing me? But there are people whose job is just to eat. I rather know the ways of God so that I can be a help to someone in need. Is somebody here with me? Amen. The secret things of the law belong to those that love him. So question number one, do you love God? Because when you begin to love God, God will begin to reveal his ways to you. Are you here with me, George? Amen. In 
the book of Proverbs 26, 25, verse 2 or 3, it says that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the honor of kings to search them out. So whoever has the ability to search out the secret things of God becomes a king to God. Are you willing to search it out? God will now begin to relate with you as why a king. Remember that you are a king already. Because Jesus Christ is the king of kings. He is the lord of lords. That's why if I was telling you about Great Britain, the guys are clever. They have the house of lords. There are people called what? Lords. But suppose I call you Lord now, you'll be afraid. But Jesus actually calls you what? Lord. He is the Lord of what? Lord. King of what? King. Somebody hit your chest and the king. I am a Lord. I am a Lord. In our college of bishops, all our bishops are I address that we address them as we are Lord. My Lord Bishop. My Lord Bishop. <laughs> And you don't know the secret why they choose to accept that. Lord means owner. If you don't accept it, you own nothing. But if you accept it, it's amazing that you begin to own. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to talk about the secrets of God with you in the next few minutes that God will give me. And I want you to learn something. I need somebody to help me to read, please. Because when I'm preaching, somebody reads for me, then I preach. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you want to walk in the anointing? Did you know that according to the order of God, nothing is used for the worship of God except the be anointed? In the old covenant, when you come into the altar, every implement in the altar is anointed with oil. As a sign that God has put his mark on that thing. So every one of us, if you are going to serve God, God must anoint you. Uh, you see, you musicians, there is an anointing that will come upon you when the man of God, Mayala Sopradunia, Lege Oseteya, Kabahaya, Lord, you are letting go! In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Like, there's an anointing that will come on the musicians. When they begin to play, if you stand here, you will not preach. The glory of God will preach. Amen. That's the anointing that will come upon the choir. If you start singing, miracles start taking place. Amen. Did you know that a, an, an anointed prophet could not prophesy until the musicians were called to play? And as the musicians played, the Bible said the hand of the Lord came upon him. That hand of the Lord is what we call the anointing. Somebody say, I need the hand of the Lord. <laughs> Everybody need a hand to help them in this life. The anointing is God's hands helping you to do what you could not do in your natural ability. I need anointing. Somebody say, I need anointing. And the anointing is dangerous. There are three levels of anointing. Somebody say, three levels. Number one, the leper's anointing. Somebody say leper's anointing. Yes. In the Bible, if you are going to heal a leper, you will anoint him. After he is anointed and he is healed, he will go to the priest and show himself. Remember there are ten lepers that came to Jesus and the Bible said, and they besought Jesus and said, Lord, if thou art willing, you will make us what? Who? Jesus said, yes, I am what? Willing. Go and show yourself to the priest. The Bible said, as they went, they were all cleansed. Is that correct? Amen. Someone said, that's lepers anointed. Amen. Every one of us who is born again. How many people are born again here? Amazing. This is a holy church. Praise God. If you are born again, you have what is called lepers anointed. The anointing that saved you. Leprosy in the Old Covenant is like a sinner. In the New Covenant, when you are born again, you have been moved out of a sinner into a righteous person. So you have been cleansed. Is that correct? Someone say, I have that anointing. Amen. Second.
second, if you begin to come to church and begin to function, God can add to you what is called the priestly anointing. Somebody said priestly anointing. Yes. And by the way, all of us are priests because we are called the royal priesthood. Somebody said we have that anointing. Yes. But there's another anointing that takes hold of everything is the kingly anointing. And that anointing can manifest in the form of apostolic, prophetic, evangelistic. It can manifest from the office of a pastor or a teacher. Praise God. I am teaching you what can move you from where you are to your next level. Because everything God does, He does it for an increase. Somebody say increase. increase. Somebody say increase. increase. Who want to read for me? You need a mic because we are broadcasting what we are recording. I need somebody to pick a mic that you read the scripture I will give you. You read with me and preach. In me. Where is the person? I'm here. You go my anointing now, eh? You are anointed of right now. Go to the book of Job, chapter 29, from verse 1. Somebody says secrets. Secrets. You are going to discover secrets today. It's amazing. Somebody says it's amazing. It's amazing. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you, in fact, want anointing? See, God will never give you something you don't desire. It's what you desire, God, we want. Someone say, I need anointing. What is the anointing? It's God's signature upon a person. It's God's approval upon a person. It's the hand of God helping somebody. It's God's presence upon a person. Saying to everything in this world, touch not my anointing and do my servant no. Hallelujah. Amen. When the anointing is upon you, you are sacred. God have reproved all the kings of the earth, saying to them, touch not what? My anointed, and do my servant what? No harm. So when you are anointed, God said, I will bless the one that blesses you, and I will curse the one that what? Sometimes I am driving on the road, and you know sometimes you can be a little bit lazy, driving on the road. Some people get angry, they begin to curse me. And as they are cursing, I'm laughing. Go ahead, have fun. If you want to curse me, go ahead and have what? Because I'm anointed of God. And God said he will curse any man, any woman that curses me. <laughs> and anyone that blesses me, God said, I will also what? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Tell someone, say, today, today is your day, is your day. To, step to step into a new area. Area you have not seen before you have never discovered before yeah. and you are going to receive yeah. what you have not received before yeah. and you are going to see yeah. what you have never seen before yeah. you are going to experience yeah. what you have never experienced before yeah. somebody say my time has come time. somebody say this is my season is my somebody say I am unstoppable am. somebody say I am marching forward I am taking hold I am recovering Whatever the enemy has stolen from me, this is my time, this is my season to recover all, recover all, recover all. If you believe it, say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, this is the story of Job. And every believer knows the story of what? Job. Amen? Amen? Let me give you some synopsis. Job was a rich man. He was a man blessed by God beyond measure. Job is a man of faith. He knows how to protect what God has given him. The Bible said that Job offered God a sacrifice every day to make sure that there is a hedge around his house. Is that correct? But the Bible said along the line, Job began to move out of faith into fear. And he began to make sacrifices because of fear, no more because of what? Faith. If you read it, there's a place the Bible said that Job said, the pain which I have feared has come upon me. Meaning that as a man of faith, 
Any day you move out of faith into fear, you break the head. As long as you remain in faith, you are protected. When the head was broken, Satan began to contest for Job. The Bible said, the devil came before the presence of God. And God said to him, have you seen my servant Job? That there is no one like him, one who feared God and shunned evil. They said, the devil said to God, have you not built a hedge around him that no one can touch him? In that discussion, God was so proud of Job that finally allowed the devil to go and touch Job. In one day, Job lost his children. In one day, Job lost everything he has. In one day, Job became sick. His skin had boils. In one day, Job lost pleasure, lost passion. In one day, a wife said to him, what are you holding in your integrity? Why not curse God and die? This is Job's story. Amen? Amen. How many of you want to be great? You must learn from people who are great themselves. If you study the character of any great man, there is a secret in him that has made him what? Great. Now, in the chapter 29, remember, I've been giving you synopsis of verse chapter 1 and on. But at chapter 29, Job began to recount his problem, his situation, and begin to discuss with us what made him who he is and why he is where he is now. From that book, if you read it, and God will help you tonight, you are going to receive something. Amen. You will not live here today with an empty hand. You will live here with something in your head. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So read for me now. Verse 1. Job, Job chapter 29. Uh -huh. Yes. Job continues his discourse. So Job began to discuss and continued his discussion. Yeah, read on, read on. How long, how long for the months gone by? For the days when God watched, watched over me. Read it again like Brother Simon. How long for the months gone by? For the days when God watched over me. Something is missing. Read it again. How I... I long for the months gone by. Look at my face. How I long. How I long mm -hmm. for the months gone by. Uh -huh. For the days when God watched over me. It's still not sounding clear, my dear. Read it again. Read it again. How long for, for how I long I long for the months gone by, for the days when God watched over me. Which translation are you reading? Which it's NIV. NIV. Yes. That one is not born again. <laughs> <laughs> Get the one that is born again. Somebody give me. New King James Version. Who has a New King James Version here? New King James. God bless you, my dear sister. I thought as much. You are reading that American Javanese. Read the, the people who started the problem. <laughs> King James. Yeah. Job, Job further continues his discourse and said, uh -huh. Oh, that I were as in months past. Why do you slow your voice? Oh, that it were like in the months past. Did you hear that? The man said, Oh, I wish it was like in the months that we are what? Past. Uh huh. Oh, that I were in. As in months past, as in the days when God oh, rushed over me. Oh, no, 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 you are rushing this. This six verses has the power to change a man's life if we do it correctly. Are you hearing that? 
This is how it was written. Oh, that it were as in the months or years. And in the days when God watched that started to that way. Oh, that I wear as in the months past. Do you see that? How many of you have ever thought after you miss something in your life, you wish that that thing never happened? Yes. Have you been there before? Yes. Have you made a mistake in your life that you wish I never made that mistake? Yes. This is the story of Job. Job is saying, how I wish it were like in the days past when God watched Somebody said I know anything. There is something David said in the book of Psalm 51. God, don't you take your spirit from me. That means don't allow your anointing to leave me. Are you hearing me? Job was crying. Job said, I wish it were like in the days past when the anointing or the presence or the presence of God was with me. Are you hearing that? Yeah. How many of you have been there before? You wish that what happened should not have what happened. Sometimes God will allow me to look at my life before I got saved. I say, God, please don't allow me to see that again. Where I am now is a lot better. Are you hearing me? Job was crying out because the trouble around him, there was no answer. There was no help. There was no assistance. He cried out, how I wish it were like in the days past when the presence of God, the anointing of God was with me. Read on. When his lamb shone upon my head. Man of God, the anointing is a lamp. Without the anointing, you walk in darkness. So Job is saying, I wish it were in the days past when the presence of God was with me, when he was my light through which I can see all manner of things. And when by his light I walked through darkness. When the light of God was with me, the anointing was with me, I could literally walk in darkness without fearing anything. Yeah. Is somebody here? Somebody say, I need an anointing. This is the cry of a man who has been there before but lost it. Read on. Just as I was in the days of my prime. When the anointing is upon you, your age is renewed day by day. Is somebody here with me? When the anointing is upon you, your face shines without you putting any cream on it. Are you hearing me, church? When the anointing is upon you, he says he renews even your youth. Yeah. Read it again. Just as I was in the days of my prime. What is in the days of my prime? In the days of my youth. So in Isaiah, the Bible pens it, Isaiah 40. Those that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and they will not be what? Really. He said the young men will faint, but those that wait upon the Lord. Hey, if you believe it, say yes, Lord. Will be what is called friendly counsel. 
God becomes your advisor. I love the time that we are showing some of the history of your past till now. All those things was friendly cancel. Angel appearing to you, that is friendly cancel. The voice of God, that is friendly cancel. God showing you miracle signs and wonder. What will happen ahead of you is friendly what? Read that statement again. When the, when the friendly counsel of God was when over my When the friendly counsel of God was over my tent, I prophesy to you, the friendly counsel of the Lord will remain with this man, this woman, this church. God will cause you to explode and expand. And through you, others will learn wisdom. They will get understanding. They will get the skills of how to make the things of God move forward. Receive it. Yeah. I said receive it. Yeah. I said receive it. Yeah. I said receive it. Yeah. So Job is saying to us, the secret of his greatness was because the friendly counsel of God was with him. Prophesy to yourself, said the friendly counsel of the Lord. The Lord always be with me. In the name of Jesus. Do you know if a young man wants to marry, God can give him counsel who to marry? Is it possible? Yes. No, God can show you this woman is your wife. Majority of the problem we have in marriages is because you marry somebody because you lusted after them and you call it love. And that's why sometimes along the journey, the Bible says, He that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, he obtains favor from the Lord. See, when you find a wife, God will approve you and give you favor. How come in the middle of the journey, what God said is good, turns and becomes sour? Could it be that maybe the friendly counsel of the Lord was not there in the beginning? Because the Bible says, All good things come from the Lord. All good things come from what? The Lord. So, somebody say, I need friendly counsel. I need friendly counsel. People have started business, but the business could not move. Could it be that there was no friendly counsel from the Lord? You could have started doing something without having what I call a friendly what? Counsel. This journey to South Africa started eight years ago. I met some South Africans in Israel. They came on a pilgrimage, I came on a pilgrimage. All of us were in the same bus for eight days with Benny Him. From there we sang, we preached, we talked. I fell in love with them, they fell in love with me. That's when God opened my heart to South Africa. But it took me eight years to step in into your platform. Eight years. And now that door, God is making it open, open. Open, 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 open. And I'm here. Amen. Someone say friendly counsel. Anything you want to do in your life, make sure you have the friendly counsel of the Almighty. Amen. Because He knows the end from the beginning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He sees naked eyes cannot what? See. He knows what the mind cannot what? Comprehend. He sets you up because he knows the end. Look at someone that said to him, you are not an accident. Yeah. Tell him you are an original. Yeah. Tell him your time has come. Time I see you marching forward. I see you rising up. I see the glory of God upon you. You are about to rise to your next level from glory to glory from glory to glory if you believe it shall higher hallelujah friendly cancer when the anointing is upon you it is light to see it is cancelled to follow yes what's the next thing when the almighty was yet with me I told you that anointing is presence when God is with you, my brother, you are unstoppable. 
I said, when God is with you, you are actually the majority, even though you may be one man. I said, are you hearing me? When God is with you, if God votes for you, you become a majority. Oh, when God is with you, he opens a door that no man can open. When God is with you, when he opens your door, no man can close it. When God is with you, you never go down. You go from glory to glory. Glory to glory. Glory to glory. Glory to glory. Somebody say yes. Yeah. children were around me. Now remember this time Job has lost his children. It is a bad thing to have children and lose them. They cause pain to your heart. Now Job is weeping and crying. Number one he said God is no more with me. His presence is no more with me. His uh, counsel is no more with me. His light is no more with me. That is the reason why I lost my children. Read that again. When my children were around me. When God was with me, my children were around. Now God has broken the head. My children are gone. I pray that every one of you here, you will have an anointing that will protect everything that God gives you. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. You must have what? An anointing on your life that protects everything that God gives you. Amen. The anointing that will protect your wife, protect your children, protect your business, protect your finance. Are you hearing me? Did you know that when you are anointed, if anybody touch your wife, he could die? Uh, uh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, somebody say Pharaoh. Pharaoh. King. King. Took the wife of Abraham. Immediately the woman stepped into Pharaoh's compound. Everyone in Pharaoh's house fell sick, including Pharaoh. Have you read it in the scripture? Am I telling you stories? It's in the scripture. Abraham was minding his business and Pharaoh trans tra transgressed the law by looking at the wife of what? Pharaoh, uh, uh, Abraham and took her into the palace. Immediately Sarah went into the palace. Everything in Pharaoh's house became sick. And you know Egyptians, they are diviners. They began to inquire, what is the trouble? What is the trouble? And finally, one of their soothsayers said, don't you know that the woman in your house is a wife to a man? You, Pharaoh, you are not supposed to break the law. Pharaoh said, but nobody told me. The woman, the man said, is my sister. <laughs> when you are anointed, even when you lie, God is still fighting for you. <laughs> Abraham told the lies. Sarah is my wife, sister. And God is still fighting because God's presence is upon him. The anointing is one upon him. I want to tell you, did you know that even Aaron could not die because of the anointing? until God asked for the robe to be removed. Because as long as he wore the priestly garment, death couldn't even what? Touch him. Is in the scripture right there. Until the robe was removed, that's when Aaron was able to fall down and die. Because God gave him a command, Aaron, your time is up. Climb this mountain and die. But before you climb the mountain, he said, Moses, remove all the rope, put it on his son, Eliezer. Amen. If the clothes was not removed, he was wearing the garment of the anointing. He will not die. Death couldn't even what? touch him. The anointing is so dangerous that Elisha died. The anointing was still locked up in his bones. People made a mistake to put a dead body in his grave. When a dead body touched a dead bone, the anointing in the dead bone spoke to a dead man to rise up again. Somebody said, I need anointing! Say it again! That's 
why the Bible says we should not desire the things that are here. We should be desiring the things that are what? Somebody said anointing. It's not earthly. It's heavenly. Somebody said I need anointing. Somebody said it's heavenly. Hallelujah. When you begin to desire increase in the anointing, brother, everything around your life will obey what you're saying. Hey! Read on. When my steps were matted with cream. Everybody say, hey! hey. Can I come down? Am I free? Yeah. Alright. Somebody said we have now reached the subject. Yeah. Don't miss it here. The rest of the thing I have been telling you is part of the story. But now this is the reality. How many of you want anointing? Sincere. Here is the secret. Because it was revealed to us by Job. Job was crying and saying, I wish it were in the days past when the hand of the Lord was upon me, when his light was shining upon me. When his friendly counsel was with me, I wish it were in those days. But because that anointing has left me, I have lost my children, I have lost everything. Then Job began to say to us what happened that made the anointing to stay with him. If I will discover what it is, I could actually tap it into it. Are you ready? Amen. So Job made a proverbial statement. He said, When my feet was what? Bathed with cream. Uh huh. And the rock poured out rivers of oil for me. Mark it. When my steps, somebody say my steps. My steps. We are washed with cream. The rock poured out for me rivers of what? Who is the rock in the Bible? Jesus. What is the oil? What is the river of the oil? Overflowing what? How many of you want overflowing anointing? Now nah, there's a secret there. He said, when my feet was battered with what? Cream. Jesus the rock pause for me rivers of what jesus even said it in the uh, gospel of john chapter 4 to the samaritan woman he said if you know who who is talking to you you would have asked him to give you rivers of living water is that correct yeah. so jesus is the supplier of rivers of what oil Somebody say, I need oil. I need oil. I need anointing. This is a secret now. So, the anointing will come to you in rivers when your feet is washed with what? Clean. Say it. Say, when my feet is washed with clean, the rock, Jesus, supplier of the anointing. He pours out for me rivers of oil, rivers of anointing for great exploit, for favor, success, prosperity, greatness, great name. is a code. We have to decode it. When your feet is washed with what? Cream. Is there any farmer here? Anyone who is a good farmer? Any good farmer here? Anyone who farms here? How come there is no farmer here? Father, there are some farmers from here. Take it if you want to take it. Get land, farm, make money out of farming. Hallelujah. Watch this, man of God. Cream, cream is separated from milk. Is that correct? Do we understand that? 
for you to get a glass of cream, you will need a lot of what? Milk. Is that correct? In the word of God, what is the word for milk? What is milk in the Bible? Little children, I desire that you drink the fresh milk of what? The word. So what is milk in, 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 in the Bible? The word of God. Someone say the word of God. God. is milk. milk. Fresh milk. Fresh. Paul said, my little children, I wish that you are growing up. Because you are only drinking milk instead of solid what? Meat. So the Bible said that when my feet is bath with cream, not milk. Are you getting something? Yeah. When my feet is washed with what? Cream. Rivers of oil will follow me. Rivers of oil will what? So, the secret of Job's life is that Job fed so much on the milk of the word of God. Until the water part of the milk left, what is now left is the cream. So, if you begin to feed on this word of God, there is a level the word of God will reach in your life. He doesn't accept the water anymore. Anyone that falls in becomes cream. It means that your life is no more flaky. You know what you are saying. You know what you are doing. You are no more like a wind turn about. Before you move your step, you know it does say it the Lord. When your step is ordered by the word of God, when your decisions are ordered by the word of God, when your actions are ordered by the word of God, when your attitude is ordered by the word of God, the rock will pour for you rivers of what? Rivers of what? Now look at someone that said to him, it's your fault. Tell somebody, it is your fault. Tell another person that can say, it's all your fault. Imagine, I'm born again now for 25 years. If I am still drinking milk, something is wrong. Are you hearing me? Some people come to church eight years. They are still flaky. They don't even know that if you want your life to be stable, you need to honor God with your tithe. You are still waiting for somebody to tell you and preach to you about it. You are still drinking milk. Your life is not ordered by cream. When cream comes into your life, nobody tells you to obey God. You obey Him anyhow. Because you know, you know that as you obey God, rivers of oil will begin to what? Flow. Is somebody here with me? Are you here with me? Listen, if you miss this, it's your fault. Because I've come to deliver what the Lord gave to me. Africa is where we are because we are people of simple excitement. We are not people of solid mass. Do you see that milk the farmer brings in? You can use it to produce solid mass. Cheese. And cheese costs more than milk. Until you allow this word to saturate your life, I reach a place that you are no longer an ordinary man. You are walking on top of butter. You are walking on top of cream. Your life is no longer a traditional man. My father's tradition. What father's tradition? Did you know that actually all of us we are South Africans, but you are not a South African? You don't know that? Our nationality is from where? But you are still struggling with your ethnic nationality. Because you are still a milkman. You are still drinking what? <laughs> I discover that from my father's family, 
I have no spiritual inheritance. None. Until my faith transformed me into Abraham's family. Unless I am transformed into Abraham's family by faith, I am still under the curse of my generational past. But when I transform myself through faith into Abraham's family, he is the one whom God blessed in all things. Then I will begin to walk in the blessings. <laughs> no, you are not getting it. You are not getting it. You are still holding to your past. Paul, Apostle Paul wrote a scripture. He said, if any man should boast, I will boast. You read it? If any man can boast, I will what? I am a Jew of the Jew. Out of the tribe of what? Benjamin. A Pharisee by street condition. They say, everything I gained in the flesh, I count them as what? A loss. So that I may gain Christ. So the book of Galatians said that if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. But you are still holding to your father's family. I'm not asking you to lose your father's family. Keep it. Only for reference point. Only one. But by faith, if you are a believer, you are in Abraham's word family. Now you can begin to claim the blessings of Abraham through Christ Jesus. Amen. Until your mind in the position you that way, you will still struggle with the elements of this earth. Somebody say cream. cream. Say water. water. Say milk. milk. Ask somebody say, where are you? Yeah. Are you drinking water? Are you drinking milk? Have you reached the level of cream? <laughs> Are you getting it? No. Until your mindset changes in line with the word of God, you will be limited by the promises that God has made to those that believe in his name. Everything we receive comes to us by faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. You will never please God without what? And faith is to believe God, to accept his word, to make his word your standard of life. Not my tradition. Not my what? You know what Jesus said to the Jewish people? Your traditions have made the word of God of no effect. I cry for myself and I cry for you. Do you know why I can talk to you boldly? Do you know why? Talk to me. Do you know why? You know. I'm talking to you boldly because in the first place, same color. Somebody say same color. Same color. Ain't no difference. Africa? Yes, Africa. Are you hearing me? I have lived in the United Kingdom for 34 years. I can't tell you other stories. But everything that happened to me happened just because my mind changed. When people say racism, I say it doesn't affect me. When they call color, I say it doesn't affect me. And everything I've achieved is because I believe in this God who defies every human situation and causes a man or a woman to rise above. I see you rising up. I say, I see you rising up. I see you taking back what the enemy has taken from you. Do you know that faith is what we call the fourth man? Somebody say the fourth man. <laughs> faith is what we call the fourth dimension. Somebody say fourth dimension. If the people of this world want to limit you by first and second and third, you go to the fourth word dimension. There is a fourth dimension that defines all the laws of the earth. Imagine Daniel, full of the anointing of God. He was thrown into a lion's den. What happened? Because of the anointing, the mouth of lions were what? Are you here with me? Even the king that threw 
him into that place was angry because his authority and power could do nothing to Daniel. Because of what? The anointing. What about his friends, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego? They were anointed and they were thrown into a furnace of fire. And the Bible said that the king was troubled. When he came before the furnace, he saw the fourth man. May the fourth man be found in your life. May the fourth man be found in your family. May the fourth man be found in your business, in your career, in everything that concerns you. May Jesus be found right in there so that it will define every opposition against you. Fire, fire. When the fourth man is present, fire has no more power over you. When the fourth man is present, sickness has no more power over you. I said, when the fourth man is present, poverty has no more power over you. Someone said, I need a fourth man. Someone said, I need a fourth dimension. Someone said, I need an anointing. If you believe me, say yes. for just three minutes. Is it okay if I talk? Yeah. This may not apply to you, but this is our experience about where we are staying, United Kingdom. The money that is washed off the face of women every day is enough to fund your ministry for 20 years. They do it in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, even before they go to bed. <laughs> Am I talking? And they have to wash it off. And the next day they do it again. And they do it again. And they do it again. And they do it again. Sometimes in my church I say to them, listen, brother, sister, go and get that out. When you get anointing, the Bible says anointing renews your youth. Yes. Listen, watch this. Moses came down from the mountain under the mountain. When they saw his face, the Bible said that his face was shining like what? Light. They begged Moses to cover his face with a veil so that the light on his face does not blind the eyes of what? People. Now, this is my own anger personal anger. I said, doctor, you will understand me. And you too, you are your whole said, doctor, you will understand me. This is my anger. The Bible says that we have a better covenant than the one Moses had. The covenant that we have in God is better than the one Moses had. And the Bible says that Moses' eyes could not fail him for 120 years. His eyes did not work, fell. Nothing fell. Everything was perfect to the last day. And his covenant is not as good as the one we have. And if that is the case, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with us? It's because our eyes are on the earthly things. Our eyes are not on the right thing. Can I ask you, how many of you today will be able to read one chapter of the Bible? One chapter. Do you know when you read, read a chapter, you drank milk. You read the second chapter, milk. Third chapter, fourth. There is a place where you will read, while you are reading, the milk began to translate itself into what? Cream. And if you come and people look at you, they say you look different. You look different. May God make you look different. Amen. What will make you look different is the anointing, the oil, the oil, the oil on your life. 
Are you hearing me? Yeah. Women, by the way, what I talked about with the make up, forget about that make up because we need it. If you people don't make up, the world will be so boring. So go ahead and make up. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But this is one thing the Lord wants us to do. As you make up, don't depend on it. Depend on the one that is on the king. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. For the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Depend on your relationship with the Lord, your fellowship with the Lord. Let the inner beauty of your personality be what people will see. Amen. And when that begins to happen, God will begin to pour for you rivers of oil. Rivers of oil. Rivers of oil. How many of you want the oil? Do you know the secret? Do you know the secret? What must you do? What is the milk? So how do we do it? Eat it like food. That's why Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. Feed on the word. Eat the word. Because the more you eat it, your body will be healed. You have new strength. You will begin to hear God clearly. You will begin to see the light of God shine. You will begin to get the friendly counsel of God. Everything Job say will begin to happen to you. Before you start a journey, God will tell you, this is how the journey is going to end. Because the anointing is upon you. Church, are you ready to move forward? Yes. Now, doctor, this is a question. In leadership training, people ask me, how do you read the word of God? This is my answer. I never read the word of God to preach to anybody. Never. I am not reading to preach to you. I am reading to you to be full of it and to be alive. But any day you give me this microphone, when I open my mouth, what is on the inside way? There are some pastors, when they are going to preach, they will read the, 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 the verse and they make three points and then they go and preach. If you preach, after three points, you have nothing else to preach. But if I can keep you here now for 24 hours non-stop, I can. I can. And every word I need to put, I will put it out of my bed, not looking at the scripture because it's no more in scripture, it's here. This one cannot help you. This. Except you eat it. And then it goes inside of you and become one with you. Somebody said the word became flesh. So the word of God must become flesh in your life before it can begin to produce what? Result. It's the word of God that has made me. Now I have traveled the three quarters of the world. Three quarters. And I'm very little to complete the remaining. There's only a few left. The word of God in me is my passport, is my visa, is my air ticket. If I tell you the miracles that I've experienced, miracles. I was messing up with some people the other day, I was telling them, because of this word of God, <laughs> God will surprise you. What did I say? Amen. Everyone say amen. amen. Mama? I was preaching in Nigeria, minding my business like this one, mission. My office phoned me. Sir, we want you to come back. I said, why? My meeting is not over. They said, no, you must come back. I said, why? The office of the Prime Minister invited you to come and drink tea. <laughs> tea. Somebody say tea. and come and drink it. They say, listen, this matter is not for you alone. It's not everybody that is invited. You are invited and when you go there, you're going because of us. We want to know that our pastor went there. Come back. When I discover that these people mean business, they say, okay, I don't have money to change my ticket. They say, forget about your ticket. We will buy you another ticket. 
you will fly back. After you finish drinking tea, we send you back again to Nigeria. <laughs> I finished meeting on a Sunday evening, entered the airplane. Monday morning, I arrived in London. In the evening, 5 a.m., I was drinking tea. I flew to Kiti in the evening 5 o'clock. Tuesday morning, I flew back to Nigeria to continue my mission. Somebody said, Tea. Tea. God will surprise you. Yeah. When this thing we are talking about begin to operate in your life, things that will happen to you, you will not even understand it. God will send you into strange places, make you change positions of authority. I can't count how many people by accident I've met and the position of authority just changed. This anointing has the power to put people in power and in a place of influence. Tell someone say you don't know where you are. You don't know who you are. Someone say I need anointing. So what are you going to do today when we live here? When we leave here, please, what are you going to do? Someone say, eat the word of God. Like food. Like food. That is It's up to you now. And when you begin to eat the word of God, nobody will tell you how to be a good and a faithful member of a church. Nobody will teach you. You will know because the word and the anointing teaches you all things. Nobody will tell you to pay tithe. Nobody will tell you to give offering. Because the word of God teaches you. Take for instance, some of you need money. How many of you need money here? Do you see what I'm talking about? Do you think you are going to prosper because of the level of your hand? No. It's by faith. Until you discover the word of faith, how to make it work for you, you will still remain in poverty even though you are coming to church. Are you hearing me? Man of God, this is the truth. God bear me witness. Two or three months past, the Lord called me and said to me, I am the one that gives seed to the sower. I am the one that does what? So if you have the attitude of sowing, God will have the habit of giving you what? Seed. And whoever soweth seed controls the harvest. Are you shaking your head? You can control harvest by the seed you are sow. Let me share this testimony we close. The next time when I come, we continue. Is it okay? Is it okay? Amen. Is it okay? Amen. <laughs> I have a friend of mine now who owns three television channels. And each one of them, I am allowed to speak on them live as much as I want. Anytime I'm free. Are you getting that? Some of you are not saying amen because you just where you are, you don't know what that means. <laughs> Until they give you the opportunity to speak to a whole nation live two hours. You don't, know the, you don't know the intensity until you have the opportunity. This man has three television channels. One is called Gospel Channel Scandinavia, Gospel Channel Europe, and then Omega Channel Iceland. Every one of them I have opportunity. When I like, when I'm free, I jump into the studio. I speak live. And it's because of him I began to broadcast on the television. It's because of him I'm waiting now for a television license to own a station myself. Right now we are we are streaming on the internet 24 hours. If you go there, you find it. What we are waiting is to get a license to switch that over to a, a normal television station. But how did it start? Can I tell you the secret also? Somebody say secret. The day I met the man, the voice of the Lord from the word of God said to me, go and sow a seed in his life. 
I said, Lord, I have nothing. And indeed, I have what? The Lord said to me, you just released your gospel album, Sing Africa 2. Why not go and give him some of them? I went back to the man and said, sir, would you take some of my CDs? The man said, yes. In a meeting like this, I left the meeting, took a cab and went back to my office, carrying a thousand pieces of the CD, and rushed back to his station and said, do you want it? He said, yes, he took it. Watch this. A thousand pieces of the CD, each one is selling for 10 pounds. 10 pounds times 1,000, how much is that? 10 times 1,000, how much is that? Are you an accountant? What do you do? Help professional. Then you think so you count money. <laughs> 10,000 pounds I sold as what? Seed. Three months later, the man called me, Brother Simon. Somebody said, Brother Simon. You know, when somebody is not born in the same family, we will begin to call you brother. Then you have achieved something. Yeah. People don't call you brother by accident. Yeah. The man calls me now, brother. Do you want to come to Iceland? I say, yeah, I will come. Because I like traveling. I went. When I reached the station, he put the map of Africa in the station. Put my seed on top of the map just to welcome me. Tell someone say, I'm in that map. That's why I'm telling the testimony to you now. You are in the map. I say you are in that one map, African map. So when I came in, I preached with him the whole day. The next day, the man left for his business, gave me his seat. He said, "You know how to do it. Go ahead and do it." From nowhere, I took off. When I finished on that visit, he asked me, "How many times do you want to be on the channel? Take the time you want." I took six days from Monday to Saturday every week. I am preaching on that channel for 12 years today. Just because I made a foolish mistake to plant one seed, I planted only one seed. God gave it seed to the sower. And the sower controls the harvest. Did you hear me? Yes. If you want 10 tons of corn, you will know how many acres of land to plant corn. You control the harvest. It's How many of you want money? Money. You really want money? Look at somebody. How much seed have you sold? By my spirit, say it. The very day Abraham met a man called Melchizedek, the Bible said he gave him the tithe of what all. And then Melchizedek blessed Abraham. Who has blessed you? Who has blessed your money? That will cause you to erupt. Prosperity. I love your car. Hallelujah. Dr. Mary likes car. I like it. When you come to London, I'll drive in my own, my own box. There are cars that speak. You don't know. They talk back to you. How I know. be driving, you talk to the car, but the car don't talk to you. Then there are cars, you press a button, you talk to the car, the car says, where do you want to go? You tell me. Ask you, what is the postcode? You tell me. You say, okay, we are long enough. Pam, they put on. Now the screen comes in like an aeroplane screen. And the car will begin to say, you turn left, turn right, turn left, turn right. And finally, say, you have reached your destination. On the right side. 